Yo, what's good everyone? In today's lesson, I want to solidify our understanding of the basics. So before we move forward to learning more complicated things, let's build a mini project together. So I wanted to share this news with everyone and I also wanted to keep it low-key. The reason why I've kind of been MIA is because I just got myself into a huge debt. Debt. As a first-gen immigrant, my parents always wanted me to buy a house. So there you go parents, I am in big debt and I finally got my first mortgage. Yay! But anyways, back to the lesson. So in order to buy a home these days, you gotta get a mortgage. But unless you're filthy rich, that's a different story. So in order to buy a house, you need a couple of things. One being a down payment. Number two, you need to know what your interest rate for how much money you're borrowing. And there's probably other stuff as well, but let's keep it simple for now. So based on your interest rate and your down payment, and also the principal amount for the house, you can determine what your monthly payments will look like. So here we have this beautiful formula and we'll be going over this together. All right, so I know some of you guys don't like math that much, but don't worry, this is very simple stuff. We're given a formula and all we're doing is we're just plugging values in. So this is gonna be super fun and you're gonna learn a bit about mortgages. Let's go. All right, so before we jump into any code, we need to understand how this formula works. So let's go through a quick example together. All right, so here's the formula where M is basically the monthly payments and P is the principal amount that you're borrowing and R is your interest rate divided by N, which is the number of months in the year. And then you divide everything by one subtracted by one plus R over N. And then you put this to the power of negative N times T. And this formula will give you an idea of how much your monthly payments will be. And just for fun, let's look for a house to buy. So we're searching in Ontario, Toronto. And as you can see, there's a lot of houses out here. So let's scroll around and let's find something that we can afford because as you know, the housing market is crazy. And if you're from Toronto, you know how bad it is. Houses are just so damn expensive. For example, look at this, 3.6 million for a detached in Markham. That is crazy. So I'm not rich, I can't afford that. Maybe I'll look for something closer to just around a million dollars. So let's click here. Nope, still out of budget. Damn, who can pay this? Almost $7 million, holy smokes. All right, let's go move farther away because as you know, the farther away you move, the cheaper places will be, kinda. Well, look, we found a 1.5 million, which is a bit cheaper. Uh, but let's go, let's go this 1.2 million. So let's click in here. Beautiful house, beautiful house. Look at this, damn, look at these photos. Wow, this house looks amazing. I wanna buy it, let's all buy it together. Let's all fund all our money together and let's all buy this house. Let's go, let's go. All right, so if we scroll down, you're gonna see they already have a mortgage calculator here. So let's take advantage of this and use it to check our work. Cause damn, if you're trying to buy a house, you wanna make sure you have all your numbers correct. You don't wanna mess up and not be able to buy your dream home. So this house is listed for $1,225,000. So let's simplify the math and let's use 1.2 million as the home price. So one, two, one, two, three. And that's 1.2 million. And usually nowadays people can't afford homes. So, so it's kind of hard to do a 25 year term, but, but a lot of people nowadays are doing 30 year terms to make their lives easier. So let's do that. And you know, this 4.5% interest rate is very good these days. Cause nowadays it's probably around 6%, 7% or whatever. So let's just put 6% just to be safe. Don't quote me on this, but if I remember correctly, if you're buying a home above a million dollars, you have to put down at least 20%. So that's around 240 grand right there. And even with that, your mortgage payment is $5,756. That is nuts. That's like literally no fun money right there. All your money going towards the mortgage. All right, so I wrote down the information here. So the monthly payment is $5,756. So this is the value we're trying to calculate with M. And the home price is 1.2 million and the down payment is 240K. So let's subtract those, 1200, 123, subtract 240, 123. So this will give us 960K, so 960K. So our interest rate is 6%. The number of months in a year is 12 and the total term is 30 years. Cool, so let's plug in these numbers. So 960,000 multiplied by the rate, which is 0 0.06 divided by 12 bracket over one minus one plus 0 0.06, 12 bracket, and then negative 12 times 30. And that's well our calculators and let's solve this problem. I don't have a calculator, so I'll be using my phone. Five minutes later. And if my math is correct, we're gonna get this value, 5,755.68 and etc. 
And if we round this value up, we're pretty much going to get 5,756. So this formula is correct. So we're off to a great start. As you can see, plugging these numbers in was not fun at all. I actually made a couple of mistakes. But anyways, as programmers, we're lazy people. We hate plugging these numbers in. We literally just take formulas, turn it to code, and boom, our life is automated. So that's why on this website, they have this mortgage calculator to make our lives super easy. So now for the fun part, let's turn this to code. All right, before we do anything, feel free to pause this video and try to convert this formula into code. I highly encourage you to do this so that way you can practice. But for those of you that are lazy, let's do this together. All right, so first let's create a block comment so that way we can write down the formula. So that'll be three single quotes like this, hit enter. And now anything we type inside here is a comment. So the formula is M equals P R divided by N. And then after that, we're gonna divide everything by one minus one plus R divided by N to the power of negative n times t. Okay, so now let's plug in the numbers. So basically, we're just gonna do print, and then we're gonna do p, which is our principal amount, which is $960,000, multiplied by r divided by n, so that's 0 0.06, divided by 12, and then we're gonna take all of this and divide it. So let's wrap everything inside parentheses, and now let's open the parentheses. So now it's one minus one plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. So now for the exponent, you just put two multiplication signs like this, and now you do negative 12 times 30. Now let's run the code. Okay, so it looks like we've got an error here. Maybe I messed up the formula. So let's double check our parentheses and make sure everything is correct. Okay, so I forgot a parentheses here, so let's close that, and now let's remove one at the end, and now let's try again. 5755.68, so this looks good to me, and it was a lot faster than using a calculator. So here's another reason why you should learn how to code, because this was so much easier than using a calculator. All right, first question to you guys. Do you think this looks beautiful? Do you think this is easy to read? Do you think this is good code? Well, if your answer is no, you're absolutely right. This is terrible code, and let me explain why. We have a bunch of numbers everywhere and nobody knows what the heck is going on. If I didn't tell you that this was a mortgage calculator, would you have guessed that this code would calculate how much my monthly payments would be? You probably wouldn't. You'd probably just be like, this is just some math. So to make this code make more sense, we should use variables. So first off, let's create a variable called principal. So principal equals 960, one, two, three. So now we can take principal and replace 960,000. So now this code makes a little bit more sense. And now let's create variables to replace each number. So next we have rate, which is R. So let's put 0 0.06. Then we have months in a year, which equals 12. And then we have term, which equals 30. So now let's copy this, replace this and this. Do you see that this rate variable was able to replace both of those 0 0.06? And that's why variables are so helpful. In programming, we like to call these magic numbers. Whenever you see numbers with no meaning behind it, you generally want to create a variable to give it more meaning. So here, months and year, let's update that. Let's update that. And let's update this. And now let's take the term and put it in here. And now when you look at this, it's starting to look more like this formula above. Instead of seeing random numbers, now you're seeing words. So now instead of print, let's put monthly payment equals this and now we can call print on monthly payment and now let's click run and we still get the same result but now at least things look a lot more better so if you want to clean up this code even more you can see that this rate divided by months and year is repeated twice so we can also get rid of this so we can copy this and let's create a new variable rate by months in year which equals this and now let's copy that and now let's replace this and let's also replace this. So let's copy this one and let's call it total months because this equation is basically the total number of months that you have to pay your mortgage. So now let's copy this and let's put it here and let's hit enter here just to space things out. And now let's click run. And as you can see, everything runs correctly. Now it looks more like code rather than a math equation. And the benefit here is if we want to change our principal amount, let's say instead of borrowing $960,000, we want to borrow $500,000 instead. All we have to do is just update this variable. So instead of 960,000 here, we can put 500,000 and now we can run our code and boom, there you go. Now we know how much we'll have to pay if our principal is $500,000.
And as you can imagine, by the time you watch this video, the rate might even go up to 0.07. So now we can just update this variable and put 0.07 and click run. And there you go, we get the updated price. So that's all I have for you today. As you can see, coding is super fun and it's super relevant to our everyday lives. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. And in the next lesson, we're gonna learn about functions and then we're gonna revisit this mortgage calculator and improve it by using functions. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also like this video. See you next time, peace.